Hey, so welcome everybody. I'm really happy to be here at Watkins Bookstore. My name is Susanna Mittermeier and I'm the author of Pragmatic Psychology, Practical Tools for Being Crazy Happy. And um, I've been just arriving in London yesterday and, and wandering the streets here and meeting so many amazing, beautiful, kind people. And one thing that was striking me was the huge necessity of people to be like everybody else, to use so much energy to make sure they're fitting in, being normal, uh, doing the right thing, saying the right thing. And I wonder like, if you just get how much energy are you using on a daily basis to make sure you fit in, you're normal, you're average, real and the same as everybody else? Wow, huh? So um, I'm a clinical psychologist and I've been working in psychiatry for years in Sweden. I grew up in Vienna. And I always had this, uh, this wish to empower people to know what they know. And the best thing I could come up when I studied was to become a psychologist. Little did I know that this was not exactly what would empower people to know what they know. So I did my whole education. I worked in psychiatry. I met countless of patients with all kinds of diagnoses. You know, ADHD, ADD, depression, anxiety, eating disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar, whatever. I mean, there's so many labels out there in the world. Other labels are, I'm mother, I'm a father, I'm bad, I'm ugly, I'm beautiful. Other different, different kind of labels, right? So this world is so much about labeling and finding boxes for everybody. So meeting people who have been labeled and diagnosed, I discovered that behind this insanity, the things that seem so weird and terrible and wrong, there would be hiding a brilliance, a genius that has not been discovered. Like how many of you have been, you know, wandering around this world, living in this world, feeling like not belonging, not belonging anywhere in any group, thinking you're totally wrong and crazy? Well, how much of that is actually a brilliance, a difference, that you haven't discovered yet. And this is something I've seen with my patients and also with myself and so many other people because I used to be one of those really weird kids who loved to be by myself and um, being around people would be so um, overwhelming many times because I would pick up so much information of the people around me that I didn't have any way to know, any strategy to know what to do with this. So, um, how many of you know that there's something different possible? How many of you have an awareness of things going around you that you have no idea what to do with? So, um, there's this thing out there that's called being psychic. Have you heard about that? Yeah. So, being psychic is something that's so misunderstood so many times. It's actually where you pick up the thoughts, the feelings and the emotions of everything and everybody around you. It's where you just, this big, big, big psychic radio receiver and walking around in London, for example, imagine how many people around you and how many thoughts, feelings and emotions you're picking up on a daily basis around you. So if you have never had any tools to deal with this, like how much of the things you think are crazy about you, are wrong about you, are insane about you, or actually things that you pick up from other people on a daily basis all the time. So this has been something that I've been encountering so many times with, for example, patients in psychiatry who have gotten the diagnosis of depression. When I've been working with them, what showed up is that 99% of their thoughts, feelings and emotions, the things that go on in their heads, actually do not belong to them. I had one woman who came um, to a session with me in psychiatry and she said, after a couple of sessions, she said, well, I've been feeling so good at home and suddenly I enter psychiatry and there's this weird, heavy energy here. And I actually, for the first time in my life, realized that nothing of that has anything to do with me. It's an awareness that I'm picking up that if I acknowledge what actually is going on, it creates a lightness in my world. So here's the invitation. So what if the things that you think are wrong about you, the, thing you, the things you think are crazy about you, insane about you, 
are actually an awareness you're having that you've never acknowledged. So what if you would give yourself permission to be you and have the freedom of being you, even if you're around countless amounts of stimuli, uh, information, you know, verbal, energetically, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So what if you're not having a problem? What if you're actually having an awareness, right? So this is something that you might want to ponder upon after this, like next time you think you have a problem or an issue in your life, what if you ask, what awareness am I, am I having here that I haven't acknowledged? Like literally, what information are you picking up here that you haven't acknowledged? Like the times when you think you're insane or uh, anxious, have any of you ever been anxious or think you're afraid? Yeah. So is there a moment in that anxiety that you're actually avoiding an awareness you're having? Like anxiety, what I found is many times we're avoiding knowing what you know. It's avoiding an awareness you're having. Yeah. Yes. So access consciousness clearing statement, that's what it's called. It's right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So in the book I talk it about I talk about it, um, what if you could be Harry Potter? So this is basically the wand of Harry Potter, which is um so part of it is pot and pock, right? Pot and pock means point of destruction and point of creation. Point of creation is where you go and create your limitations. In now, yesterday, the day before, lifetimes before, it doesn't matter when. So it goes to the point of creation, where you created that, and it destroys and uncreates it. The point of destruction is how you destruct, how you limit yourself by keeping that limitation in place. So this is something that changes everything that's been in the past. And why does it work? Because you choose it. So. The wand of a magician, why does it work? Because the magician chooses to change something, right? It's like an extension of the magician's potency. So this is like the pot and pock. It's like an extension of your potency and it's like intensifying the choice to change something. So this is the pot and pock. And there's other parts to it, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, right, wrong, good, bad, everything you've decided right about it, good about it. Um, uh, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine, different nine layers, and then shorts, boys, and beyonds. Um, so, for example, the beyonds would be how you, how you go and freeze yourself up. For example, you get a bill and you go, oh, okay, this was more than I thought. You take yourself out of being present. You're like, oh, you're thinking about the worst scenario, how you cannot pay this, and you're just gone and you take yourself out of the possibility of changing something. So this is a short, short explanation of the clearing statement and I explained it in the book and you can go to theclearingstatement.com and there's a huge explanation about it, uh, I think in half an hour. Rather could be, what, like, what is it? What do I do with it? So what if it's not about understanding what it is rather than being pragmatic and asking, so how can I deal with this so it creates more freedom for me? love about being pragmatic that's why I call what I do pragmatic psychology pragmatic means doing what works and what works is very different for each and every person so by hearing voices you could ask so what can I do with this what works for me if you want to make money with it well that's a great question how can I make money with this capacity of hearing voices because what if it's not actually a disability a wrongness a disease a diagnosis what if it's actually capacity that you can hear voices? What if it's actually something you can use to create your life? Like for example, make money. So this is something that's probably not been talked about in normal psychology. This is something I've been trained. I've been trained to be a normal psychologist. I am a psychotherapist and I did all that and I saw how far that gets people. It actually, um, what I saw is it's, it's to adjust people to be like everybody else, to be normal. And my question, what is there beyond being normal? What capacities can you actually discover when you go beyond the necessity of being normal, right? So hearing voices, for example. Um, another thing would be any kind of things that you're aware of um, is something that's not normal. So picking up other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions 
like you walk around London city and you wonder, hmm, um, I feel some kind of pain in my body. I feel stomach ache. For example, today I walked by a hospital and without me noticing that I'm actually walking by a hospital, I could sense some tightness in my body and I ask, oh, who does this belong to? And that question made me look up and I saw, oh, there's a hospital. Am I actually aware of, of what's going on in the peop for the people in the hospital? I'm like, oh yeah. So that awareness, that question, opened up a space to acknowledge what's actually going on. So this is the beauty of asking questions. You don't go, oh my God, I feel terrible. I have problems with money. I have problems with my relationships. I feel crazy. I have pain in my bodies. These all would be answers you're using to lock yourself up. If you ask, wait a second, all the things that I call issues in my life, problems, um, limitations, what if I ask a question about it to open up some space to find out what's actually going on? This is what's called consciousness. Consciousness is putting on the lights to see what's going on. So you're not stumbling in the, in the dark and making the problems that you think you have your reality. So by asking, huh, okay, the things I call my problem, my issues, my pains, if I actually ask a question, what is it? Okay, so a question would be besides what is it, who does this belong to, like I did today with the hospital. I ask, oh, who does this belong to? Immediately, I'm looking up, there's the hospital, and my pain starts to go, which means there's space being created that allows me to acknowledge what's actually going on. So acknowledging what's going on always creates a lightness in your universe. Yeah. So if you use your GPS, you know, your inner GPS, your awareness, your sense of greater possibilities, it's your greater possibility system, that your GPS, you will always go for what feels light is right, what's heavy is a lie. So all the answers you've been fed with, which, oh, this is your diagnosis, uh, you, I'm crazy, I'm wrong, I have problems with money, like get the energy of that. Does that feel light or is it like make you feel heavy? So truth, how many lies and answers have you been buying about you that are sticking you? How many stories are you telling yourself on a daily basis what you are and what you're not, what you're good at and what you're not? It's like these people basically wake up in the morning and they go, oh, I am so-and-so, and I have this and this issue, and I have this and this problem. And then they find evidence to make sure, oh, well, yeah, that's the way it is. Like, look at my bank account, I don't have money. Like, look at my partner, he's still yelling at me. So people find evidence to make sure that the problems that they've decided are theirs are still there. And you are so creative at that to find evidence on a daily basis that the things you think are real, the problems you think are real, are still there. And these are the lies and the answers you are perpetrating on yourself on a daily basis. Nice kind of self-abuse, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how else can you use your creativity for you instead of against you? I mean, you're extremely creative to make sure that the problems you had yesterday are still here today. You go, oh, look, here it is, look, here it is, look, here it is. Rather than using your creativity for you and asking, okay, so what if I let go of everything I've been yesterday? Like everything I've been yesterday, I will now destroy and uncreate it. And you can use the magic wand, which is the pot and pock, the access consciousness clearing statement. You can read it in a book. It's right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. It's, um, and it's, a, it's like a magical, it creates space between the molecules of every solidity you've bought is real. Like every problem you make real, it's like a wall. It's like, here it is, here's my problem. So that pot and pock, that clearing statement, it creates space between the molecules of that wall to go, oh, wow, it's gone. Why is it gone? Because you chose to uncreate it. Who created the problems in the first place? I'm sorry, you. <laughs> Which is actually good news because if you're the one who created them, 
you are also the one who can uncreate them. So that's why the pot and pock works. I'm not going to explain every word in it. You can find the explanation in the book. Yes. Exactly. That's brilliant. How pragmatic is that? So what if it's not about finding solutions? What if you could, I mean, did you have grandmothers who fixed um, the holes in underwear? Right? I mean, most people, or socks, right? So, so what if it's not about fixing holes anymore? What if it's actually going, you know what? The things that don't work in my life, rather than trying to find a solution, who and what else can I choose? So what can I be or do different here that I haven't acknowledged? It's like in relationships. So many people try to fix relationships. Probably might be a yes or a no in your universe. And according to if it's a yes or a no, you go, okay, if I get a yes, what can I change? If no, huh, so what can I be or do different that creates even more for me in my life? So can you see how those questions actually, rather than solving problems, create something different. It's not about fixing, it's not about understanding, it's about what else can I choose. If you try to understand, where are you? You're up here in your beautiful, beautiful mind. <laughs> and understanding is a beautiful word because it means to stand under. If you try to understand, you're constantly standing under something or someone. It's not always a pretty view, sometimes it is. So. So, you, instead of trying to understand, you're trying to, what if you ask, what can I be or do different here that actually expands my life, right? So this is why I call it pragmatic rather than dramatic. Pragmatic is somewhere where you go, okay, what can I be or do different rather than fixing problems? Because if you fix a problem, you've already decided you have a problem, right? And you already have an answer, I have a problem. And you're already buying a lie and a story about you, I'm having a problem. And you're going in the same circle and the same circle and over and over and over and over again. Rather than going, the thing I call problem, what is it? What do I do with it? Can I change it? And if yes, how can I change it? Right? So once again, what lies and what answers about you are you buying that are limiting you? So everything that comes up with that, notice the energy is like... So all of that that comes up right now, will you please now destroy and uncreate it? Yes, thank you. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. <sighs> okay, so one more time. So what lies and answers about you are you buying that are sticking you? And everything that comes up here right now, if you can just go destroy and uncreate it, would you be willing to now destroy and uncreate all that? Thank you. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Can you imagine as a clinical psychologist having heard that pot and pock the first time and someone came to me and said, well, you can just say pot and pock and the things dissipate. And I said, pot and pock, you know. As a clinical psychologist, having heard that you can just dissipate something with total ease, was totally unbelievable for me. I went really just by saying pot and pock and asking people to destroy and uncreate it. You can just destroy and uncreate things. Wow. So this was something where my mind was totally fighting against that. Because I was taught that changing people's lives, it takes time, it takes energy, and it takes money. <laughs> and it takes a lot of time and a lot of sessions. So just coming to someone and somebody offering you, hey, this has been something you have been carrying with you your whole life. Truth is not a time to destroy and uncreate it. It's not a time to let it go. And the person would go, yes, and choose to let it go. And you can pot and pock that was a paradigm that totally changed my world. But it matched the energy of what I knew is truly possible to change with people. It matches the energy of what I know is possible to facilitate people with and for. The possibility of really choosing to change your life. And when you choose, when you go, this is changing now, that change is just a choice away. Have you ever come to a part in your life where you said, you know what, this ain't doing it for me anymore. 
this is changing now. Whether it's a relationship, a abuse situation, any limitation basically is an abuse situation. You're abusing yourself by not allowing yourself to know what's truly possible. So have you ever come to a point in your life where you said, you know, this doesn't work for me anymore? Relationship, job, whatever. And you had this demand in your world to say, this is changing now. Did it take very, very, very long until things change? Did they eventually change? Yeah, because when you come to a point, when you say, this is changing now, you are using your potency to open up doors to something beyond the limitation you have been creating so far, right? So once again, what stories, what lies are you buying about yourself that are sticking you? And everything that that is, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Thank you. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. So, we are welcome. So the, the pot and pock, this, and you don't really need to remember the words I just said. You can say the weird thing the weird lady said the other day. And you can go, um, you're in a traffic jam and you go, oh, this feels heavy. What's, what's that? And you go, everything that that is, everything that's weighing me down right now, I will now destroy and uncreate it. So and many people see. say exactly what you say. What about the voices I hear? Well, again, in psychiatry, if you meet a doctor, they would say, oh my God, you're insane. They probably would give you a diagnosis called schizophrenia. Um, or, or, you know, at least say you have hallucinations. So the thing is, that is an answer you're given. The doctor says, this is what you have. There's no more questions that's, that's been asked. So the thing is, if you buy an expert's answer about what's wrong with you, for example, you have uh, schizophrenia, it's like a dead end. You're not looking any further. You have already decided, okay, this is who I am. This is the insanity that I have to live with. And you stop asking questions. So in that case, what if you would ask a question, the voices that I hear, what is it? What do I do with it? Can I change it? And how can I change it? Four questions that I can really, really recommend you to ask. What is it? What do I do with it? Can I change it? It's not always you can change things right in this moment. And then if yes, how can I change this? So this was actually five. I need to learn to count. So it's another story. So anyway, so the voices you have in your head or the voices you pick up on. So what awareness are you having here that you haven't acknowledged? If we use the question that I just been introducing you with. So are you actually aware of beings around you that other people are not aware of? You can call them entities, you can call them beings. I mean, there's so many names for that. But are you actually picking up on things that are not visible? But you can hear beings that are there. I mean, there are beings that have no bodies. You know, people who passed on. Have you ever had somebody who died and you still felt their presence? Yeah. Well, just because their body is gone, doesn't mean they're gone. They're still here, their energy is still here, and you can still it's talk. It's not about the words, it's about your demand to go, you know what, it's been nice having you in my life, this is changing now. So it's not, it's about asking and receiving, and it's about being the energy of change. Many people talk about ask and you shall receive. And the thing is that many people forget this little part of receiving. Right? People ask, hey, universe, what would it take for blah, blah, blah to show up? And then they go, oh, okay, I'm just going to be really nice now, and I'm going to wait, and I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, and then they wonder why things don't change. Why? Number one, you're not being the energy of change. You're not going, you know what? This is changing now. Notice the energy? It's like, Phew. you're acknowledging the potency you are. And number two, number three, where whatever it is, see, my counting, <laughs> you are... Um, not receiving because many people when they ask questions of what else is possible they have already decided in the back of their head that it's not possible so when people ask for example what would it take for my relationship to be greater what would it take for more money to show up it's a question like how many times are you asking for something greater but you've already decided in the back of your head oh no it's not possible it will never show up for everybody else, but not for me. So this is where you, you're already 
um, being the energy of lack rather than of possibility. Right? So what if you're aware of, if you're asking for greater possibilities in your life, to actually be aware of, hmm, have I already decided that I cannot have it? And here you can use the pot and pock. You say, everywhere I've already decided I cannot have it, I will destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds, or pot and pock, or whatever, the weird thing the lady said. So once again, so everything you've decided is not possible for you, everywhere you're buying the insanity of lack, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Thank you, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, fuck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So the only insanity that there is, is not being who you truly be. It's buying everybody else's point of view as yours, not knowing what you know and not trusting you. That is the only insanity there is, right? So on the banner here, I don't know if you can see it, it says, what if your insanity is the sanity that changes the world? So insanity is where people think they're insane, but there's actually a sanity hiding behind everything they've called wrong about themselves, right? So what if you actually ask, what's right about me I'm not getting? People usually ask, oh my God, I'm so, not. they don't ask, they say, I'm so wrong, I'm so terrible, I'm so effed up, whatever they say. And then you go, huh, okay, so, what capacities are hiding behind all the things I've called insane? What sanity is hiding behind that insanity that if I would unleash it would actually not only change my world, it would change their world. And the funny thing is I've seen this with so many countless of patients and people I've been working with that when they actually find out and when they're actually being the difference in the world, the things that they call absolutely crazy and insane, they're inspiring everybody around them because people go, oh my God, if she or he can be that, I can be that too. And it's like, I started to talk by how much energy are you using to force yourself to be normal, average, real, and the same as everybody else. Trying to do the right thing, thing trying to say the right thing. So this is how you drive yourself crazy, by trying to be normal by making yourself contract to fit in, to be like everybody else, to not be too much. And London, for example, um, is a place where there's a certain standard of being normal. You gotta be proper, you gotta um, wear your body in a certain way, you're not supposed to move too much because if you're moving too much, you are probably seen as absolutely insane. So this is something you learn to entrain with Wherever country you live in, I mean, Maria, you are in, you came you, from Spain. I know there's a different kind of movement with your body. You're using your body in a different way, right? So there's a different kind of normality. Wherever you go, there's a different kind of normal, normality, and we're used to, and train, without thinking about it, to what's going on in every particular country, until a point where you're making yourself crazy, cutting off lots and lots and lots of capacities and creativity about you to make sure you fit in, right? So all the creativity, all the living energy you've been cutting off in favor of fitting in and being like everybody else, truth, how much of that will you now destroy and uncreate that? Thank you, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond, so world, watch out. <laughs> be, be aware what you're asking for. And the cool thing is, what if you're willing to be judged as crazy? What if that is not relevant to you anymore, right? So all the lifetimes you've been in an insane asylum, all the lifetimes you've been in those straight jackets, all the lifetimes you've worked in an insane asylum and put other people in straight jackets, will you please destroy and create that? Thank you, right, wrong, good, bad, fuck, fuck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So uh, this is the point of view people take with them from other lifetimes in this lifetime and install them in a new body and the pot and pock goes back to wherever you created that point of view and dissipates it, destroys and, and uncreates it. So what if you're willing to be judged as crazy? How much more freedom would you have? What if every judgment that people project on you is actually something you could receive rather than defend yourself against? 
how much more energy would you have? How much more freedom would you have? If someone would give you a gift, you would say thank you. If someone says you're insane, you say thank you. Right? So how much more freedom would you have being willing to be judged? Right? So everything that that is, everywhere you're not willing to be judged is crazy and insane. Everywhere you're defending yourself against that, will you please destroy and uncreate that? Yes. Thank you. Right, wrong, good, bad, <laughs> fuck, fuck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I've been working with so many people who've been called ADHD. ADHD is called Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. It's where people are, yeah, it's like uh, kids, kids and teenagers and, and, and adults who are extremely movie, like they're moving a lot, they're having a lot of energy in their bodies. And if it comes to a certain point, they get a diagnosis, which is called ADHD. And then they get usually medication. Um, and so they're put to sleep, basically, like they're um, contained. And so working with kids and teenagers and adults with ADHD, um, it's been interesting to see that when they don't see that as a wrongness anymore, as a disability, and actually discover the ability behind that, they are discovering that their liveliness, the thing that's called ADHD, is actually a living energy that they're capable of, that is a huge contribution to the world. Because doesn't the world need more energy, more living energy, more movement? A world that's more like, okay, how can I be normal and fit in? It's like that movement is something that's required in the world. People with ADHD have extreme, extreme, extreme capacities to do many things at the same time. Kids with ADHD, for example. Have you ever tried to tell a kid who's very living energy to do the homework and only the homework? How well does that work? Not so well. Actually, kids with ADHD, they benefit if you let them do the homework, at the same time have the TV on, listen to music, and do Facebook and emails. Like as many stimuli as possible is actually something that, that matches the energy that they are. Every time I say that to someone who has been diagnosed with ADHD, they go, oh, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that this is actually my functional reality. This works for me. And how many of you as adults, when you clean your house, do you actually go and clean every room and finish and then the next room and finish? How many of you going, okay, let's start vacuuming and then we're gonna call and then we somebody and then we're gonna um, clean a little bit there and I'm gonna check the emails and then I'm gonna make some coffee and then I'm gonna continue cleaning there. It's like, yeah, so what if that is not a wrongness? What if you're not, not necessarily have to do one thing after the other but you can actually allow yourself to start with many things at the same time so what if you find out what works for you what if you're pragmatic with you and go truth what works for me that I haven't acknowledged what if you get over doing things the right way or the wrong way and trying to find the right way and avoid the wrong way and rather go, huh, what works for me? What works for me in relationships? What works for me with money? What works for me with my business? Right? Cool. So I'm gonna invite you to ask your questions actually. Great. Great question. So, okay, so um, the question is, we live in a world where things go on, wars go on, people are depressed, your loved ones are depressed, and how can I actually be happy and create my life? Okay, great question. So, the thing is that there, there are a couple of things, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can address a little bit because that's actually a big, big, big question. So, um, so, how many people who have that point of view are actually trying to heal the people who are depressed. So if there's something that's sticking in your world and you cannot just let it go and it feels like, ah, oh, I just can't be happy when my mother is unhappy, let's say that, right? Or I just can't be happy when there's war going on on the other side of the world. So how many people who have that point of view actually have a capacity of changing what's going on for that person, right? So let's take your family members, let's say, um, you have a mother who is depressed. Like most people have at least one family member who has been depressed. And then they wonder, why, why do I have that constant depression in my world? Well, truth, are you actually having a capacity of healing that person, let's say your mother, 
that you have never acknowledged. So if you have an awareness in your world, oh, there's something else possible, the world can be easy, I can be happy, you can be happy, we can all be happy, but you have someone in your family who goes and has a de constant depression, and you want to just make them happy, you want to you want to just do whatever you can to make that person happy. And the thing is, at that point, you miss to ask one question, which is truth. Does this person truly desire to be happy? Right? So one thing I learned in psychiatry is that just because people say I'm depressed, help me get over it, doesn't mean that they actually would like to get over it. It's insane. But many people who have problems and difficulties actually love their difficulties and their problems. They're basically in love with them. It tells them who they are, it gives them a, self, a sense of themselves, it's their, it's their thing that they know, oh, at least as long as I have my problem, I have my life. As long as I have my problem, I know who I am. So when you have someone like this in your, in your world that you care for, that you love, and this person is not happy, and you so want to use so much energy to make them happy, and you don't ask truth that this person really desire to change this at the moment, you are sticking yourself with their unhappiness. You're taking their unhappiness, and you're basically installing that, putting that in your world, in your body, and then maybe they feel better for a little while, but because they like their unhappiness, they're gonna choose it again, and you're sitting there with your happy unhappiness too. So what else is possible beyond you taking on other people's unhappinesses? The only, the only reason why you can't just have ease and joy being you when everybody else around you is unhappy is because you have a point of view that unhappiness is bad. What if it, unhappiness is not bad or good? What if it's just a choice? Right? So what if you allow people to choose what they choose until they choose something different? What if you have that level of caring in your world to not make people get over their unhappiness, but to actually let people to choose what they choose until they choose different? And that's a big thing, it's a big, big muscle to practice, to have that level of allowance in your world to let people choose, even if it's a loved one who chooses something destructive, and you go, truth, can I do anything here to change this? Can I do anything here to contribute to this? And you get a big no in your world to trust that and to go, okay, so what if my only job here is to be in total allowance of what's going on for that person without forcing them to change? Have you ever had someone in your life who forced you to change, who thought you should do something different? What did you do? Yes, I will change, or uh-uh, now, definitely not, right? So if somebody wants you to change, they're like, there are dukes and bears and walls up in no time. If you have total allowance, it's like walking in the woods. The woods, the ocean, nature never requires you to be any different. What if you could be that space for people? Right? So being that space and not having a point of view that people should be happy rather than unhappy allows you to go, okay, this person is unhappy, cool, can I do something? No, right, okay, so what if I can just be an allowance? And that space inspires them to choose something different when they do. Cool? Great. Okay. <laughs> so, right, so what if, what if we let go of interpretation, of interpretation at all? Because if you try to interpret if you try to get any kind of concept, what, what's going on here, where do you have to be? You're probably up here. You're like, ah, oh, is it this or is it that? Should I do that or should I do this? Notice the energy of that? It's like any time you have this kind of like, ah, notice this, hmm. This is where you actually are up here and trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense at all, right? So, and it's a brilliant question you're asking, truly brilliant. Because this is what so many people do. They're like, ah, oh, is it this or is it that? They're trying to use their head to find freedom. They're trying to, if I understand if it's this or that, if I understand more about that concept, I will have freedom. But that never gives you freedom. It's the acknowledgement of what's going on that gives you freedom. So the thoughts, feeling, and emotion that you put brilliantly, it's something you're picking up. It's something you're sensing. You're aware of it. 
And then you said, well, what if I don't do anything about it? Exactly. What if you don't do anything about it and you just let it go through you? You just let it like when you're out in nature and you sense the wind and the wind has an intensity in this moment and then it changes intensity and then it changes direction and you just notice it, right? You never have a point of view like, oh, okay. <laughs> what if you have that same ease with any kind of thought, feeling and emotion you're aware of? You go, oh, this person is thinking of this. Oh, they're having this kind of emotion. Hmm, and now it's more intense. Now it's less intense, right? So notice that you can have that ease exactly like you have with change in nature with thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Because they're basically like weather too. And if you're together with a woman, you know they can change in any moment, right? <laughs> you never know where you're at. <laughs> And what if that is something you can use to have fun too? Or what if it's something like, how much fun can I have with this? Because this world is full of thoughts, feelings and emotions. It's like, what if it's not about getting rid of everything and transcending beyond it? It's like, no, they're here. How much fun can I have with this? If you have a moment of where you're really angry, like go and enjoy that anger. Go. I'm gonna do an Oscar nominated anger and I'm gonna throw some pillows and I'm gonna scream and then watch how long that's gonna last. Probably not that long because you go, oh, okay, I'm over it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make myself a sandwich now, right? Because the less you have a resistance against it, the less, the more you go, like you say, oh, I can just notice it and then I can play with it, I can have fun with it, then. This is not something you're the effect of. So the target here is for you to not be the effect of anything that goes on around you. This is where you start to be the leader of your life. Right? And what you base your decisions on if you don't use your thoughts, feelings and emotions. Brilliant, right? So um, the thing is that I, I noticed this. Um, I did a lot of classes. So the tools like who does this belong to? It's an access consciousness tool. And so I use the access consciousness tools to um, to apply to therapy, and and so I did a class once, and it was a seven day class with access consciousness. And I came to a point where I just couldn't think anymore; it was gone. Like there was no thought in my head. So I, it was a class in Australia, and I when you are in Australia, you have to to write a departure card at the airport. And there was a card and I could read it, it was nice. And then I read, okay, write your name, fine. I remembered my name, all good. And then they asked for some other information which I could just copy from my passport, which I did. And then they asked for the date. I never know the date, so I check in my iPhone. Okay, so day, month. And then they ask for the year. And I'm like, okay. So my version of that iPhone, it didn't show the year. I'm like, what kind of phone is that? So. I, I'm like, okay, this is really weird. I have absolutely no idea what year it is. There's nothing going on here. So I'm like, okay, universe, I'm having a really strange moment. And I knew I had the choice to go and say, excuse me, sir, um, what year do we have? And I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So what else is possible? And I said, universe, can you help me out? What's going on here? Um, what year do they call this? At that moment, 2010, that number just came in my head. I could not calculate chronologically whether that was right or wrong. I could not say, okay, we just had 2009 and then with 2011, so yes, this sounds good. But I knew that it was correct. I just knew there was no doubt. I wrote 2010, it was correct. So at that moment, for the first time, I realized your question, which is, oh, there is a way of functioning beyond thoughts, feelings, and emotions, which is called knowing, being, receiving, and perceiving. So I'm not going to go into everything because that's a lot of information. I talk about it in the book. And it's where you just know, right? Because usually when you do a decision, you go, oh, what's right? What's wrong? Should I go out with this person? Should I go out with that person? Should I take that job? Should I take this job? And you're like, ah, oh, you know, you drive yourself crazy because you're trying to find the right choice and avoiding the wrong choice, right? So talk about insanity. Hmm. This is this reality. So 
how, what's possible beyond this is where you access what you know, which is knowing is like this, just, you just know, right? When you just, um, did, did you ever had this moment where you just know, oh, I gotta call this person, uh, I just gotta go there, I don't know why, it doesn't make sense, and then something showed up? Well, that's your knowing, that's, that's, that's so much bigger than thinking, because thinking is just a polarity of right and wrong, plus and minus, it's like being a battery, and then there's a charge in between. Uh, knowing is just way beyond all that, and it accesses so much more information. And then another time I was sitting with a friend, and he's really great at politics. I'm not so much interested in politics, I gotta admit. So. I had the point of view, oh my god, he's so smart, he knows so much, and this and that, and, and then I'm like, okay, so, hmm, what if I let go of the point of view that I don't know anything about this, pot and pock that, and ask, so truth, what do I know about this that I have never acknowledged? So after asking this question, I open my mouth, and out comes all kinds of like, oh my god, who's talking? That's really smart, I didn't know I knew that, and he looks at me, I thought she was stupid, I could read it in his mind. <laughs> and so, so I was surprised about what came out of my mouth because I asked, truth, what do I know here that I haven't acknowledged? So when you let go of the point of view that this is your only uh, way of, of uh, navigating through this world, people think that their thoughts, their feelings and emotions are the only way how to navigate through this world, how to make decisions, and you go beyond this, you can actually find out, huh, I do know more. There is another muscle, there's another space to go to, and to be, that actually tells me what's possible. And then I know what I know. And it's so quick and easy and light. It's like um, autistic kids, they do this all the time. This is the nature of autistic and Asperger and ADHD kids. They come in, they don't think they need to think and talk and, and, and feel and emote. They're like, why would I go to that contracted thing? They're just being, knowing, perceiving and receiving just because that's who they are. In this world, because they don't talk, because they don't think the way normal people do, the only conclusion experts come up with is that there's something wrong with them. But actually, what are they showing us that we haven't acknowledged?